I'm excited just at the prospect. I'm talking Downton Abbey. Just less than a month now until this hits the big screen once again. And if you want to get yourself ready for what will be one of the biggest cinematic treats of the year, maybe this is right up your street, because this weekend at the Anvil in Basingstoke, you can catch Cinema in Symphony, where Downton Abbey composer John Lunn will be performing some of the classic music from the show. And he's with us on the show this afternoon. Hi, John. Hi, Sarah. Hi, lovely. lovely to be with you. Lovely to have you on the show. And, and you know, it's not just Downton Abbey for you, is it, in terms of your musical credits? Because it's quite extraordinary, some of the shows that you are responsible for providing the theme tunes for, the likes of Bleak House and Hotel yeah. Babylon and Waking the Dead. What is the the strategy? You must have a strategy for for coming up with these things in the first place because you, presumably you've got to know about the plot you've got to know about what's going yeah, on in the, the show yeah yeah the, the music the music's always the last thing to go on these programs it's all edited and filmed and <clears throat> i just basically work away you know there's for each episode or film you know i just work away on the on, on the music for the underscore underneath the dialogue and and eventually, you know, there's a tune screaming at me, going, "It's me, it's me, it's me!" For the, right. you know, for the title sequence. So, so basically, yeah, you you are someone who works on the the incidental music, if you like, for, yeah. for these programs. So I suppose by that point, you have ingested everything about those shows, haven't you? Absolutely, and you know, and it's good that the that, that the theme tune actually comes out of working on the programme itself. It just makes it you know, just more, much more cohesive and, yeah. and you know, and, and identifiable as well, you know. Really. So on that basis, w- was it easy to come up with the theme to Downton Abbey? Because it's such an iconic piece of music. Oh, quite, well, funny enough, um, the, for the title sequence, I, I'm, I didn't actually write it for those pictures because basically, you know, the title sequence starts starts off with a dog's bottom, and then it's basically about you know chandeliers and things. But I didn't I didn't have those pictures when I wrote that music. I had the very first scene from the very first episode, which was a train going through the English countryside and following a telegram that had been used that the air to Downton Abbey had been drowned in the Titanic, and eventually we end up with a you know a picture of of, of Downton Abbey itself, High Clear Castle. And that was what the, that music was written for. But everybody loved it. And so they asked me to do a 30-second version of it. So I cut it down to 30 seconds, and then they put the, the, the actual you know, pictures to the music, which is quite unusual, to be honest. And, and well, and it works, doesn't it? it you would never know well, that music, that music was not written for that. You know, the, the pictures themselves, although it's a great title sequence, the pictures themselves don't really tell you what you're about to see or the kind of scale of the sort of emotion and intrigue and drama that you're about to see. And, and, then, and then, But the music's doing all that, basically. So it's, it's a massive part of the storytelling. But t- talk me through that, because in that piece of music, what are you trying to get across? So when you say it was the original was written and it was a scene that was involving a train going through the countryside, presumably there was... That there was a little bit of that feeding into it as yeah, well, you well, know. Well, 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 it started out with it with the train going, train, and the, you know, there's a lot of energy, you know, underneath in the cow lower strings, doing that that sort of chug, real chugging, a bit like a a train itself. Yeah. And then there was a solo piano thing, which is meant to be really quite lonely, and that was for Bates, who we never we we don't know who he was, but he was kind of looking for lonely out of the train window, looked like he's. His better years had been, you know, were behind him. And then we were following the telegram, you know, which carried, conveyed all this news. And, of course, there's no dialogue up to this point at all. So I'm kind of trying to convey to everybody the importance of these things that they don't know about, you know, that only later on become relevant. I'm trying to sort of imbue all those elements with an importance that, you know, without the music you wouldn't get. Yeah. 
It's fascinating hearing the kind of what was going through your mind as you were writing this, because, you know, there are so many things to consider, I suppose. And of course, one of the things that you doing the kind of job that you do don't have is is audience reaction to these things as a rule. No. Do you? you know, you are writing no. these things in complete isolation and it's not like a musician who then gigs with that music and, and knows how the audience is responding. So to do a show like the one that you're doing, the Anvil in Basingstone, must be lovely because finally you get to see the audience response to it yeah absolutely yeah um, and we're doing I was supposed to be doing we were just about to set up a, a big tour of both Britain and America and Japan before the pandemic uh, kicked in we were, we were supposed to be doing a Downton Abbey live so in fact this one at the Anvil is the first one that I've done for well two years actually oh, wow okay and yeah. what, what kind of response do you get? Because presumably everyone everyone loves you cracking out the Downton Abbey theme. <laughs> I think. I mean, yeah, I'll, I like playing it myself because it's quite a, it's, it's a tricky sort of uh, piano part because although it has a veneer of classical, really, you, you need to be a bit like Elton John to play it. You know, right. It's, that, it's, kind, it's kind of, it's almost rock piano at times, but with a, you know, with a kind of slightly classical feel. So um, there's very few pianists I've ever come across, uh, apart from Elton John, who can do that. So that's why I like doing it myself. How does it feel for you to watch that set to the opening titles, be it on Downton Abbey, Downton Abbey rather, when it's on the small screen, but maybe even more so on the big screen? It was great on the big screen once we'd done the when we did the first movie, uh and I don't know if you remember it, but there's a kind of a real as a preamble up to that moment and I think the first four minutes and the and the theme tune still hadn't kicked in, but then you kind of arrive at the house. Yeah. And you know, and I had a much bigger orchestra than I had for the T V series. You know, I had a much bigger budget, um, and I just had to, you know, suddenly had the space to be able to do it because you get much more space in a movie, yeah. You know, for, for the music, and there's so much dialogue usually in, in the TV version. Um, no, it was brilliant. Yeah. Well, we very much look forward to seeing you at the Anvil in Basingstoke this coming weekend. You can get tickets uh, online right now. And not only are you performing, but you're also doing a Q&A on stage with the audience, aren't you? Apparently, yes. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Nothing like being thrown in at the deep end. We all, we all look forward to knowing what curveballs we can be thrown. But it sounds brilliant. I mean, there's yeah. only so many things I can say anyway. So, that's true, um, that's yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, and everybody yeah. loves Downton Abbey, so you have nothing yeah, to fear. Yeah. I'm quite sure of that, yeah. John. Uh, that is John Lunn, composer behind Downton Abbey. And as I mentioned, uh, Cinema in Symphony, tickets of which available now. It's on this coming weekend. You can go online and get yourself some tickets. The magical audience-engaging experience of Cinema in Symphony returns to the Anvil. Really inspiring, it's beautiful. Really a different night out, fantastic. Wonderful, spectacular and magical. Perfect. Amazing stoke. (laughs) It's just been amazing. It really has. Brilliant. Hear your favourite film music played by a full-scale orchestra. Take selfies with Darth Vader and his stormtroopers alongside other intergalactic characters. See that? Featuring music from all eras of Hollywood's biggest films. Raiders of the Lost Ark, Singing in the Rain, The Magnificent Seven, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dances with Wolves, Beauty and the Beast, Superman and Star Wars. And with local links to the film set of Downton Abbey and Highclere Castle, any award-winning composer John Lunn will be performing his own Downton Abbey suite alongside the Cinema and Symphony Orchestra. Get your tickets now via Facebook, Instagram or the Anvil Arts website. Cinema in Symphony, Saturday the 2nd of April 2022.